husbands of Ashaima and Tulakua and Taifa were left brutalized and traumatized after the invasion of the area by military personnel on the dawn of March 7. The military personnel stormed the area after stabbing to death of a young military trooper, Imoro Sharif. In the process, 184 persons were arrested, although they have all now been released. The Ghana Armed Forces in a statement justify the operation, adding it was officials criminals involved in the killing. Following the brutalities, the Defence and Interior Committee of Parliament, which has supervisory oversight of the security sector, said members will be in Ashaman the following week, Thursday, March 16, to assess the situation. The committee took the decision not to visit the area last week, as at the time police and Ghana Armed Forces were undertaking their investigations. We, as members of the committee, cannot inflame passions by going there to make comments that were annoying a fashion. We are not to do that. Our mission is to make sure we have peace in this country. The unfortunate incident that happened, we have all condemned it. And minister has even apologized on behalf of the military that they admit that they were SSS. Defense Minister Dominic Nitowo, who also addressed the media, warned against antagonizing members of the security services. Incidents like this in the life of uh, the country do happen. We are shaping up a, a country and um, we are going to have some of these incidents, regrettable incidents happening. There. But I would still appeal to the people of Ghana to be very respectful of people in uniform. It will help all of us. But we cannot say, I will not say anything until the committee itself and us have gone on Thursday to the place and visited the place to ascertain for ourselves. The military brutalities have been condemned by a large section of Ghanaians as well as some groups. Every single action that we take on behalf of the state now must ask this fundamental question. Will that action contribute to creating a more vulnerable space within which our enemies will act? And right now, there's no doubt in my mind that were any extremist groups to come and to recruit, people will say, yes, we want to strike a blow against the state. All right, so now let's swing straight to Ashaiman, where my colleague Judith Awachitando has been engaging and monitoring the uh, Defense and Interior Committee's engagement with the citizens and some persons who were affected by last week's brutality. She's joined us via Zoom for a quick chat on this. Judith, good afternoon. What can you report? Hello, Judith, can you hear me? Can you hear you, Martin? Great, great. So I'm asking that... Uh, so. How long has it been since the committee arrived? What kind of engagements have they had? Right, so we are currently at the uh, Epensco Church here in Asham, an official town, where the Defense and Interior Committee, as well as the Military High Command, is a meeting with some residents of Ashaman to speak about the issues that have happened over the past few weeks. Now, earlier we were at the residence of um, the late Imoro Sharif, where his mother, um, his little brother, his father, as well as uh, the rest of the family were meeting with uh, the Defense Committee. And yes, the uh, chairman of the Defense and Interior Committee in Parliament, Kennedy Ejakon, assured uh, the family that he will be sponsoring the education of the young uh, brother of um, Imoro Sharif, the late Imoro Sharif, uh, till he gets to the tertiary level. So he will be sponsoring till the tertiary level, his education, of which uh, the family was very grateful to him. He also promised that he will be building a, an actual turf, right, at, I mean, in the community of a shaman, of which, which will be named after the late Imoro Sharif. And so these are some of the details. Of course, the defense minister as well, uh, that is Dominic Nitiwo, was also at um, the premises of the late um, Imoro Sharif. And he was um, consoling the family as well on the issues that had happened. He said that the state will not sit aloof to, uh, to allow such a, a, a events to happen again. That's the killing of a soldier. Of course, he made mention of the death of a soldier, uh, that's Major Mahama. Uh, some years ago, and he's saying that he, won't, he would ensure that the state would not set a loop to ensure another death of a soldier happens, of course, after this one. So these are some of the things that have been happening right here as the official town in Ashaman.
Right, and uh, Judith, so that's uh, the visit to the family of the late uh, soldier. How about the victims of the brutalities? Have they also been engaged yet, or that is yet to happen? Right, so that is what we have just reached this place to do. So we just got to um, the Pentecost at church here in Asham, an official town, and the meeting has just started. So we are yet to get some updates from what would happen out of that meeting. We'll bring you these updates in our subsequent bulletins. But yes, we are meeting currently with um, the residents of Asham and those who were brutalized as well. Right, right. Thank you so much, uh, Judith Awachitanda, for that quick report. Uh,